Madam Speaker. I call the right honourable David Carter. Madam Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to make a second contribution to the Dairy Industry Restructuring Bill number two. And first of all, can I say to the contribution we've just received from Stuart Nash that we're not here debating Fonterra's monopoly position, as he said. We're actually here debating the fact that there is now so much competition in the, new, in the South Island market particularly. In fact, 24 per cent of the farmers now supply a company other than Fonterra, and that is the reason this legislation has to be before the House today. There is no monopoly for Fonterra. There was at the time that the legislation was first passed when they collected 96 per cent of the milk that was produced within New Zealand. Those days are gone, Mr Nash, and that's a good thing. And uh, while Mr Nash claimed full credit of the Labor government for passing the legislation in 2001, as I pointed out in an earlier contribution I made, the work was actually done for a long period of time by the former government, who then was uh, not elected, re-elected at the end of 1999, the process of the amalgamation of two major co-ops took probably four or five years. So yes, Labor can claim that they finally passed the legislation. Oh, Damien O'Connor interjects that National didn't want to do it. I sat with the likes of John Roadley, with Henry van der Hayden on numerous meetings that went on for many, many hours, chaired by the Honourable, uh, the Right Honourable, I think, Bill Birch, who did a stunning job in doing the initial work to get this to conception. And for Labor to deny the history of this repeatedly is just wrong. And uh, I, well, oh, the no, Honourable no, Damien O'Connor no, says we couldn't do it because we no, couldn't no, work no, it out. No, it was no, handed no. to them on a platter. The only thing that hasn't been worked out by the Labor government is the mess we find ourselves in tonight when that Minister of Agriculture has sat on this issue since he became the Minister in October uh, last year, five months ago, hasn't been prepared to do anything about it until he finally finds he's embarrassed by an expiry date. That means he's got to bring this to the House and put the House into urgency. And that urgency, that urgency was supported tonight by the Green Party, who, when the great late Rod Donald sat in this House as the sort of first member of the Green Party, used to talk and rail against the use of urgency. It shouldn't be happening. The farmers of the South Island have a right to say. I have a say on this piece, uh, piece of legislation by going to a select committee. And Damien O'Connor just interjected and said they will. Well, I need to point out to Damien O'Connor that we're doing the first reading, the second reading, and the committee stages, then the third reading. There is no chance, no chance, Damien O'Connor. And I would have thought for a person that's been around this House for so long, he'd actually understand the legislative process. Now, I know he took the first contribution for the second reading debate, and he lasted about two minutes and 15 seconds with his contribution. It may be because he doesn't understand the significance of this legislation, and if that is the case, he should stand by and let somebody else attempt to represent sure, the Prime Minister of I'll New Zealand. Because I, well, I'm not sure that Stuart Nash has had a charming record either, to be honest. But the, listen, the, the point I want to make is we had a Labor government that's been talking about honest and transparent government. It sounded great. I remember the Prime Minister elect talking about this government will be open and transparent. So what the Minister's done is he's rushing this legislation through as quickly as he can, evidenced by his two minute, 15 second call earlier in the second reading. And then he talks about a review of the dairy industry. Well, if he's going to have a review of the dairy industry, give us tonight the terms of reference. Because the Honourable Damien O'Connor has been absolutely silent tonight on the terms of reference. Now, the Honourable Mika Whaiteri got a bit more loose with her tongue 
and said it would be comprehensive. So that's all we know. And I suspect that my colleague, the Honourable David Bennett, is absolutely right that in the terms of reference we're going to see the chance of the Green influence on the Labor Green New Zealand First Government, and they're going to move this into environmental issues. And David Bennett says it's already written down on paper. I haven't seen that yet. But I think if that's the case, then Damon O'Connor has the opportunity to stand in this House and tell this House what's going on. Because as I said earlier, I think Fonterra is a great company. I'm fully supportive of Fonterra. I don't think it's performed to the expectations they said they would when they were first put together. They gave us a significant um, outlook on where the company could take the New Zealand dairy industry to. They've got part way there. They haven't done it perfectly. But as I said in my first reading contribution, they are the envy of many of the dairy producers around the world for the way they operate. They haven't done it perfectly, but they've done it pretty well. And now if the Labor Greens New Zealand First Government proposes a review, then why can't we know what that review will encompass? <laughs> it's a simple question. Well, I don't rely on New Zealand First. They, talk, they went around the election campaign saying they were the friends of the farmers <laughs> representing rural New Zealand. And then the first thing they did in the coalition discussions is they signed up with the Greens. Yeah. yeah. So what New Zealand farmer has any trust at all in the right Honourable Winston Peters and the New Zealand First Party? Well, New Zealand has trust. Now, Mr Patterson over there is dumbfounded. He's silent. And I'm not the least bit surprised because I listened to his contribution earlier and he made that man, Richard Prosser, look good. <laughs> and uh, I can tell Mr Patterson, having watched the way the New Zealand First Party operates, he'll have to lift his game, otherwise he'll get a call from the leader in the not too distant future and it'll be a DCM. Don't come Monday. Because that's the way the New Zealand First Leader operates, and that's why we've got that Walker Hub uh, jumping bill before the House. Mr. Madam Speaker, we're here today because when Fonterra was established, we wanted to make sure that we had competition in an industry. At the time it was established, 96 per cent of all milk collected in this country went to co one company, and that worried me because it became a fat inefficient organisation, certainly the dairy farmers of New Zealand, and at that stage there were about 12,000, certainly the New Zealand dairy farmers suffered, but it was far more important to that. This is our biggest export earning industry in this country. So we set up an arrangement in the dairy legislation, the Dairy Industry Restructuring Act, which ensured the competition developed. To the extent we're here in urgency tonight, because the Honourable Damien O'Connor has ignored the fact that we've now triggered the, the limits put in for the South Island level of competition. Around 24 per cent of all milk collected in the South Island doesn't go to Fonterra. And that, Mr O'Connor, is a choice the producers make. They look at the likes of Sinlay, they look at Oceania, they look at Westland and a number of others, and they decide that they'll send their milk somewhere else for various reasons. Now, it may be around the capital structure of Fonterra, it may be around the price for milk solids, but what this legislation did, which I had a significant involvement uh, as a junior associate minister in the late 90s in bringing together and introducing to this House was a complete transformation of the dairy industry where we set up an industry that was competitive. And the reason we are here tonight is because that, com uh, that competition threshold for the South Island has now been met. So I say to Mr O'Connor, if you're going to have a review, 
because you've spent the last nine years dreaming about the future of the industry rather than getting anything concrete. Tell us tonight the terms of reference of that proposed review. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Madam Speaker. I call Mark Peterson.